Hi there, I welcome you to the second lecture on the course Physics of External Beam Therapy. In this lecture, we will look at important factors that are required for treatment time or MU calculation. This lecture will cover definitions and explanations of factors such as PDD, TAR, TMR, TPR and SMR. We will also look at the concept of equivalent square and the determination of equivalent square. The factors that are going to look at, as I said earlier, uh, percentage depth dose, PDD, tissue ratio, tissue phantom ratio, tissue maximum ratio, scatter error ratio and scatter maximum ratio. Before I move on to discuss the factors that are required for absorbed dose calculation, I would like to talk to you about inverse square law. You all know inverse square law states that the intensity of radiation I is inversely proportional to the square of the distance D. That is I is proportional to 1 by D square or I is inversely proportional to D square. If you look at this picture, I have a source of radiation here and at 1 meter distance, let me say the dose is approximately 100 millisievert. If I go 1 meter further, it reduces to 25 millisievert. That is by 2 square that is 1 by 4 reduces to 1 fourth of this value. This picture can explain you why it reduces to 1 fourth of it when you go from 1 meter to 2 meters. Let me say this is the source and at 1 meter distance I have a field size of 10 by 10 which is 100 centimeter square and in, the, in this 100 centimeter square you have exposure of 40 mR per hour. Now you go 1 meter further due to similar triangle the field size becomes 20 by 20 which is 400 centimeter square. Now the number of photons you had in 10 by 10 which is 100 centimeter square is now distributed over 20 by 20 which is 400 centimeter square that is the 4 times the area which means at any one point the number of photons will be one fourth of what you had here. So this is why it reduces by one fourth when you move from 1 meter to 2 meter. Let us now look at the parameters that are required for determination of absorbed dose. Let us first look at percentage depth dose. The percentage depth dose is defined as the percentage ratio of dose to a small mass of tissue at depth D in phantom to the same mass of tissue at D max in phantom with SSD remaining constant. To put it simply, it is the ratio expressed as percentage of the absorbed dose at any given depth and the absorbed dose at the build-up depth on the central axis. If you, if you look at this picture, this can explain you the percentage depth dose better. This is the source and this is the source to surface distance. For example, if it is cobalt 80 or 100, if it is LINAC 100 centimeters. This is the measurement of dose at D max and this is the measurement of dose at depth D. The percentage depth dose is defined as the dose at depth D to the dose at D max expressed as percentage. So it is DD divided by D max into 100. Also note the percentage depth dose is a function of field size. S, yes, it's a function of field size. It is a function of the energy of the beam, beam quality and it's a function of the SSD, the source to surface distance and of course it is a function of depth. In the previous slide I did say the percentage depth dose is a function of SSD or the PDD changes with the SSD. Why should it change or how does it change? The simple answer is inverse square law. But to explain that I have two setups here. For a 6 MV beam, one setup with 100 cm SSD, another setup with the increased SSD of 110 cm. Let us say you want to know the percentage depth dose at 10 cm depth. What you would do is you will measure the dose at D max and measure at 10 cm depth and take the ratio. You would do the same thing in this case also. You will measure at D max and measure at 10 cm and take the ratio. The dose at 10 cm depth will be lower than the dose at D max for two reasons. One is there is attenuation of radiation from D max to the depth of 10 cm. But this attenuation is same in both cases. Whether it is 100 cm SSD or 110 cm SSD, the attenuation from D max to 10 cm depth is the same. The second reason is the dose at 
10 cm depth will be lower than the dose at Dmax because of inverse square law. That is the inverse square law correction between 101.5 cm to 110 cm. Similarly, here the inverse square law correction between 111.5 cm to 120 cm. Let us assume the dose at Dmax is 100 and look at what would have been the decrease in dose only because of inverse square law. So, in this case, if you calculate, the 100 would have become 85.14 if I apply an inverse square law correction between 101.5 to 110. Similarly, you assume here it is 100 at Dmax and the dose would have decreased only because of inverse square law to 86.3 when I apply an inverse square law correction between 111.5 to 120. If you look at the dose decrease in dose due to inverse square law is much less in this case when there is an increase in SSD compared to a shorter SSD. Therefore, the percentage depth dose will be higher when the SSD is increased. Therefore, the PDD increases with SSD and the reason is with increase in SSD the inverse square law fall off is less. Here are some of the points that you have to remember as far as the depth dose is concerned. Number one, in case of depth dose measurement, please remember the field size is defined at the surface of the phantom and percentage depth dose increases with the SSD, the beam quality that is the energy because higher the energy, higher the penetration and field size but decreases with the depth. The value is normalized to 100 at Dmax, percentage depth dose is normalized to 100 at Dmax. Here is an example how the percentage depth dose changes with field size. For example, you have the PDD curves drawn for various field sizes starting from 2 by 2 to 40 by 40. You can see that the PDD increases initially and then it almost becomes a flat. That means when the field size becomes very large, it is almost like it goes to a saturation level, right? Doesn't increase beyond certain level. So, but there is an increase of percentage depth dose with field size. Then the next one is percentage depth dose with energy. How does it change with energy? As I said earlier, percentage depth dose increases with energy. Here you have PDD curves for four different energies. One is cobalt, second one is 6 MV, 10 MV and 15 MV. You can see that the percentage depth dose, for example, if you take 10 centimeter depth, this is for cobalt, the green one and 6 MV red and blue is 10 and 15 is the brown. So, the percentage depth dose increases. The other thing you I want you to notice as the energy increases, the, the depth of Dmax also increases. For, for example, for cobalt it is 0.5, for 6 MV it is 1.5 and 10 MV it is approximately 2.5 and 15 MV it is about 3 centimeters. Some more points to think about for depth dose. Depth dose increases with the SSD. Why? I did say the answer. Larger the SSD, smaller is the decrease due to inverse square law. Right? So, that is the main reason. Most often in radiotherapy, you will have to treat with an SSD that is different from the SSD with which you measured the percentage depth dose. So, the question is when you use a different SSD, can you still use the same percentage depth dose? The answer is you need to correct the percentage depth dose for the new SSD. Let us say for example, you measured the percentage depth dose for uh, SSD F1 and you now want to treat with a different SSD F2, you can convert the percentage depth dose which was measured for F1 to the SSD F2 by using a factor called the Maynard factor. We know very well it is the inverse square law that is making the change in the percentage depth dose with SSD. So, this maniac factor actually account, accounts for the inverse square law correction. It is also necessary you have to correct for the difference in the scatter. When you change the SSD, the field size will slightly change. So, the scatter contribution will also change. That needs to be accounted by taking the ratio of the phantom scatter factor for the two different field sizes. However, this is a very small factor, so most people tend to ignore this when they do the PDD conversion. However, it is a good practice to include the phantom scatter factor.
So the PDD for the new SSD F2 now reduces to PDD for the SSD F1 multiplied by the Maniard's factor which is the inverse square factor F1 plus D by F2 plus D whole square into F2 plus DM by F1 plus DM whole square into the ratio of phantom scatter for the two different field sizes. Let us now solve a problem on converting PDD from one SSD to another. The percentage depth rose for a 15 by 15 centimeter square field at 10 centimeter depth at 80 centimeter SSD is 58.4 for cobalt 60 B. Now we have to determine the PDD at 100 centimeter SSD for the same field size and the Dmax for cobalt is taken as 0.5 centimeter. We note the median's equation for inverse square law correction between the F1 which is 80 centimeter in our case to F2 which is 100 centimeters and the depth here is 10 centimeter and the depth of maximum is taken as 0.5. So when you substitute F1 as 80, F2 as 100, D as 10 and DM as 0 0.5, you get a maniac factor of 1.043. Now you multiply the PDD for 80 centimeter SSD for 15 centimeter field size by this factor you get the PDD for 100 centimeter SSD for 15 centimeter field size. Please note I have not used the ratio of phantom scatter because we are doing it for the same field size. So the increase in field size is a very very small because of the difference in SSD and hence this could be ignored in this case. The next factor we have to learn is the tissue ratio TAR. Tissue ratio is defined as the ratio of absorbed dose to a small mass of tissue in phantom to the same mass of tissue in air with buildup and with the chamber unmoved between these two measurements. So when you do the measurement in tissue and in air, the chamber should not be touched and the distance from the source to the chamber should be the same. The other definition which could be easy for you is that the tissue ratio is defined as the ratio of absorbed dose to a point in phantom to the dose in air at the same point under electronic equilibrium condition. That's what I said the, with the build up here. Right? Let us now understand this with the diagram. We need to do two measurements to determine the tissue ratio. Tissue ratio is the ratio of dose at depth D to the dose in air with build up condition or with electronic equilibrium established. So this is the measurement in air with a distance source to the chamber distance let me say is equal to the SSD or SAD. With the build up you need to have the build up here that is the electronic equilibrium should be maintained and the dose at a particular depth D in phantom. So between these two there are two differences here the attenuation is only air attenuation and the scatter is only air scatter whereas here there is an attenuation by the tissue or the phantom and there is scatter from the tissue or the phantom. So there are two differences. Suppose you measure this with the build up that is at D max right that is the meaning of with the build up and the depth here is equivalent to D max then the attenuation is similar in these two cases. So the only difference is here you have scatter from air, here you have scatter from the tissue mostly from the back of the phantom. So this is referred to as the back scatter factor. So tissue ratio at D max when the depth is equal to D max it is back scatter factor. It is also called back scatter factor. The tissue ratio increases with file size. Right? You can see that as you increase the field size, the scatter will increase. So the tissue ratio will increase and initially the increase is much and later the increase becomes a little less and is almost like a saturation level. These are some of the points that you need to remember with respect to tissue air ratio. For the measurement of tissue ratio, the field size is defined at SAD. TAR is the ratio of phantom dose to dose in the air. Please remember one measurement is in phantom, the other measurement is in air. TAR is independent of SSD. This is a very important factor that you have to remember. The main reason the tissue ratio was brought in is for this reason. That is when you do an isocentric treatment, the SSD keeps changing between the fields and every time if one has to use PDD, we will have to apply a correction for PDD. 
to avoid that PDD correction for SSD, the tissue ratio was brought in. It is independent of SSD because the position of the detector is not altered between measurements. Tissue ratio increases with beam quality, that is the energy, and decreases with depth beyond D max. If one has to measure tissue ratio, the depth of the chamber has to be increased by adding more water above the point of measurement. Here is a point to ponder. The question is, TR does not depend on SSD, why? The answer is, the distance between the source to the detector is not altered between measurements and hence, there is no inverse coil influence. Please remember this very well, okay? The next thing one has to learn is scatter ray ratio. Scatter ray ratio is defined as the ratio of the scattered dose at a given point in phantom to the dose in free space at the same point. Let us look at this. This is the dose at free space. Here it is only air scatter and air attenuation. Here is the dose in phantom where you have attenuation in phantom and the scatter in phantom. So, if you take actually the ratio of these two, you should get the scatter alone. So, how do we do that? There are two components when you measure the dose here at the DD, there are two components to it. One is the scatter radiation and the other one is the primary radiation. If you can eliminate the primary radiation, then you get only the scatter radiation. How to eliminate the primary radiation from this measurement? So, what you do is you measure tissue ratio for various field sizes and extrapolate it to get the tissue ratio for zero field size, which will be the primary component. So, if you subtract the primary component from the tissue ratio for the field size you are interested in, then you get the scatter A ratio. These are some of the points that you need to remember with regard to scatter air ratio. Scatter air ratio or the SAR increases with field size but decreases with depth. It is obtained by extrapolation and subtraction. This is what I said in the last slide. Since you cannot measure tissue ratio for zero field size, you measure tissue ratio for other field sizes, plot it, extrapolate it and determine tissue ratio for zero field size and subtract it from the tissue ratio of any field size for which you need to know the scatter ray ratio. That is the subtraction that you have to perform. SAR value is the phantom scatter dose per unit dose in air. This is the definition we discussed in the previous slide also. Sector SAR is used to predict dose for complex field shapes like irregular shape, inside open area, behind shields, outside of the field. If you want to measure that scatter dose, you can use the sector scatter air ratio. Next factor we will be learning is the peak scatter factor. Originally, this was called back scatter factor. That is the dose that scatters back into the point of measurement. So, the point of measurement here becomes the D max. So, it is the ratio of dose measured at in the uh, in phantom at Dmax to the dose measured in air but in build up condition that is at the electronic equilibrium condition. So, this is something which we learnt earlier. It is the tissue ratio at Dmax that is a simple way of saying it. So, phantom scatter factor is the dose at Dmax in phantom divided by dose in air with build up or at equilibrium condition. So, the only difference between these two is here you have phantom for scatter, here you do not have phantom scatter, you have only air scatter. These are some of the points you have to remember as far as the peak scatter factor is concerned. It is also referred to as the back scatter factor, which is the older term than PSF, mainly used for low energies. Peak scatter factor or back scatter factor is actually a measurement of tissue ratio for the depth of Dmax. This is what I explained to you in the previous slide also. It is useful for conversion of dose in air to dose in tissue or vice versa. Suppose if you have measured dose in air, then you can convert it into dose in tissue by multiplying by this peak scatter factor. The next factor that we will learn is the tissue phantom ratio. Tissue phantom ratio is defined as the ratio of dose to a small mass of tissue at depth D to the same mass of tissue at a reference depth D reference in phantom with the chamber unmoved at SAD. See, please remember we measured TIR. The difference was one was in air, one was in phantom. 
Here, both the measurements are in phantom. So please remember, tissue ratio is defined as the ratio of dose to a small mass of tissue at depth D to the same mass of tissue at a reference depth D ref. There, the reference depth was D max. In phantom, with chamber unmoved, exactly like TR, you don't move the chamber from its position between the two measurements. That is, the distance from source to the chamber is maintained constant between the measurements. To give a simple definition, tissue ratio can be defined as the ratio of absorbed dose to a point at depth D to the point at reference depth D referent in phantom with constant source to chamber distance. Right? So please remember the distance from source to chamber is constant. This picture here will explain you the tissue phantom ratio. As we saw previously, tissue phantom ratio is the ratio of dose at depth D in phantom to the dose at reference D depth in phantom. Tissue phantom ratio is a function of field size, energy and depth. Here you can see you have to measure at depth D in phantom and at a reference depth in phantom and take the ratios of both. The tissue phantom ratio was defined as a substitute for tissue air ratio because air measurement is not permitted for higher energies the tissue phantom ratio was defined. The next factor we have to learn is the tissue maximum ratio TMR. TMR is defined as the ratio of absorbed dose to a small mass of tissue at depth D to the same mass of tissue at reference depth where the reference depth is D max in phantom with chamber unmoved between these two measurements. To give a simpler definition, TMR is defined as the ratio of absorbed dose at a point at depth D to a reference point at depth D max in phantom with the source to chamber distance same between these two measurements. You don't change the distance but from source to chamber, that is you don't move the chamber. So what is the difference between tissue maximum ratio and what we learnt in the previous one, tissue phantom ratio? The difference is Tissue maximum ratio is a special case of tissue phantom ratio where the reference depth is D max. Both are same. In tissue maximum phantom ratio, you can say the reference depth could be 10 cm or D max. If the reference depth is D max, then you call it tissue maximum ratio. This diagram explains you the measurement of tissue maximum ratio. As I said earlier, tissue maximum ratio is same as tissue phantom ratio but the only change is your reference depth here is D max. So tissue phantom, phantom ratio with the reference depth of D max is called a tissue maximum ratio. So in your measurement, you measure at D max and measure at any depth D. You take the ratio of dose at depth D to dose at D max, then you get tissue maximum ratio. And here, tissue maximum ratio again is a function of field size, energy and depth. But it does not depend on SSD. Tissue ratio, tissue phantom ratio, tissue maximum ratio, all these three do not depend on SSD. These were defined mainly for the purpose of isocentric treatments. These are some points to remember for TPR and TMR. The field size is defined at SAD. TPR and TMR increases with beam quality and field size. TPR and TMR are cousins of TAR but with calibration in phantom. So if you have done calibration in phantom, you use TPR and TMR. If you have done calibration in air, you use TAR. But please remember for high energies, calibration in air is not permitted, is not possible. TMR is a special case of TPR where the reference depth is D max, that is, D ref is equal to D max. Let us see how the TMR changes with the depth and energy. As you can see, the TMR increases initially, goes to a maximum value at D max, like your percentage depth dose, and then starts decreasing. Here, I have got four different curves one for cobalt 60, that's the green one, and you have for 6 MV, 10 MV and 15 MV. As you can see here, the tissue maximum ratio increases with energy. Right? For any depth you look at, for example, you look at 10 cm depth, the tissue maximum ratio is higher for 15 MV as compared to cobalt or 6 or 10 MV. 
one of the problems is in measuring the tissue maximum ratio or the tissue phantom ratio measurement of tmr or tpr requires the chamber to be stationary and the phantom thickness or the water level above the chamber should increase though a few vendors have come up with this method of directly measuring tmr or tpr in the water phantom the alternative method is to measure pdd and convert that to tissue maximum ratio so the tmr can be obtained from pdd by applying an inverse square correction and a correction for the phantom scatter factor so if you can use this equation you can convert pdd for any energy and depth to the tissue maximum ratio the next important factor you have to learn is the relative dose factor it is also called output factor it is called output factor because it is the correction applied to the output measured normally when you do the output measurement you do it under a reference field size and a reference condition the reference field size used for output measurement is usually 10 by 10 but the treatment is not always 10 by 10 you use some other field size maybe a rectangular or a square field size or an irregular field to convert the dose measured for a reference field size of 10 by 10 to any other user field size you need the relative dose factor therefore relative dose factor is the dose measured at reference depth for any particular field size divided by the dose measured at reference depth for the reference field size this difference is because of the increased or decreased scatter for other field sizes as compared to the reference field size the output factor or the relative dose factor increases with field size this is because as you increase the field size there is increased scatter so the output factor or the relative dose factor increases with field size right these are some of the points that you need to remember for relative dose factor or output factor the beam output depends on field size the output increases with increase in field size due to number 1 increased collimator scatter characterized by collimator scatter factor sc and increased scatter within the phantom which is given by the phantom scatter factor sp so the relative dose factor has got two components one is the collimator scatter the other one is the phantom scatter there are some more points to remember with reference to relative dose factor the field size is varied relative to a reference field size of 10 by 10 when you measure the relative dose factor the relative dose factor or output is measured in output factor is measured in phantom only the relative dose factor or output factor increases with field size due to increased scatter this is used to convert dose from reference field size to a specific field size the user may be using it for treatment normally the output factor in the olden days were measured for square field sizes what you do is for you measure for 4 by 4 6 by 6 8 by 8 10 by 10 12 by 12 15 by 15 20 by 20 etc we didn't have a practice to do it for rectangular field sizes but recently when we got linear accelerator and sophisticated treatment planning system algorithms we do measure measure it for rectangular fields also however when we did it for square fields whenever you use a rectangular field the use of the output factor needed a conversion from rectangular field to a square field so here is a conversion from rectangular field to a square field for example you have a 10 by 10 square field is it equivalent to a 5 by 20 rectangular field is the question area wise both are same this is 10 by 10 is 100 cm square 5 by 20 is again 100 cm square can we say both are same no they are not the same the reason for that is this let us consider two fields one is a square field of 10 by 10 another one is a rectangular field of 5 by 20 both by area same 
both have 100 centimeter square area but when you measure output the 10 by 10 square field will show a higher output than 5 by 20. The reason is the scatter from far off place of a rectangular field may not be able to reach the point of measurement. Now the question is if I have 5 by 20 what should be the equivalent square that has the same output like a 5 by 20. To get that equivalent square we have an equation which is 2ab by a plus b where a and b are the sides of the rectangular field. If for this 5 by 20 if you calculate the equivalent square comes to 8 centimeter. That means the output of a 5 by 20 rectangular field will be the same as the output of a 8 centimeter square field. Right? So this is the concept of equivalent square. This also applies for a circular field and a square field. They will not have the same output. So there you need to use this correction factor. To determine the equivalent square for any rectangular field, we learnt about an equation that is 2ab by a plus b. Alternatively, in BJR supplement number 11, they have provided a table called equivalent square table. You, you can use this equivalent square table to find out the equivalent square for any rectangular field. For example, in the previous case, we had 5 by 20. The long axis was 20 and the short axis was 5. If you go here for 20 and 5, if you look at, you get somewhere between 6.7 and 9, which if you interpolate will come to approximately 7.9 or 7.8. And we calculated the equivalent square to be 8 centimeter in the previous case using that equation 2ab by a plus b. You can either the, you use the equation 2ab by a plus b or you can use this table to find out the equivalent square. Whenever you use a physical wedge like this in the radiation beam, it will attenuate the radiation that reaches the patient. To account for that, you need to use a factor called the wedge factor. The wedge factor is the ratio of the dose at reference point with wedge to the dose at reference point without wedge. You need to measure the dose without wedge and with wedge and take the ratio of those two. That will be the wedge factor and this correction has to be applied to the output to account for the attenuation by the wedge. Normally when you buy a LINAC or a cobalt, the vendors would give you four different angles of wedges, 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees and 60 degree. For each of this you need to determine the wedge factor. The next one you have to do is to determine the shielding tray factor. Whenever you want to place a shield to shield some portion of the beam, you have to have a tray in the path of the beam in the collimator to place the shield on top of it. This tray even though it is made of acrylic would attenuate the radiation beam by few percentage. To correct for that attenuation, one has to determine the tray factor exactly as you determine the wedge factor. Shielding tray factor, otherwise shortly called the tray factor, is the dose at reference point with the tray divided by the dose at the reference point without a tray. So ds by dref will give you the tray factor which has to be used to correct the output whenever a shielding tray is used in the linear accelerator or in the telecobalt unit. The last one that you need to know is the energy or beam quality index. As far as TRS-398 protocol, which we discussed during the TRS lecture also, it uses the TPR 2010. What is TPR 2010? It is the tissue phantom ratio at the depth of 20 centimeter with 10 centimeter as the reference. So one has to determine the dose at 20 centimeter depth and 10 centimeter depth and then take the ratio and that these two doses as per the condition of TPR should be measured without moving the chamber which means you have to only increase the water depth here. This ratio of TPR 2010 is called the quality index in the case of high energy beams as per TRS-398. For 6 MV it is approximately 0.67, for 8 MV it is 0.71, for 10 it is 0.74, for 15 it is 0.77 and for triplet beams 
for 6 triple F it is 0 0.63 and 10 triple F it is 0 0.705. If you note, the 10 triple F is something very close to an 8 MV with the flattening filter. All right. So this is quality index you need to measure, particularly for your output calibration as per TRS-399. Thank you very much for your patient listening. There are some MCQs as usual after this. Please do them before you move on to the next lecture.